thank you sir um, you know as sir introduced myself um, uh, you know i'm a lawyer by training so you know a lot of the uh, time i spent is on on legal and regulatory issues um, in the financial sector the you know the issue of confidentiality of customer data um, is one of the paramount importance and you know it, it has been for a very long time uh, long before technology or rather information technology came into uh, the force or whatever being started used in banking so the history of banking all along has been that uh, if you look at regulations confidentiality of customer data has been of uh, paramount importance at the same time uh, law enforcement agencies have also uh, you know valued uh, the data that uh, that banks and financial institutions have about customers so banks have been uh, in this role of being uh, one at one hand the protector of consumer data um, of the consumers and at the same time I have always had to work with law enforcement agencies on providing this data as and when required um, and this has been you know envisaged both in, in the, what we call as kind of the common law system uh, uh, which was uh, you know before the enacted law games and also uh, under the various banking regulation acts um, and the Reserve Bank of India Act what has happened because of information technology is um, now a lot of the banking happens o over the internet uh, both in terms of the consumer using the internet to do the banking as well as the intra-bank uh, networks that are doing the uh, uh, intra-bank transactions and even inter-banks you know so two banks settling uh, transactions rather than settling individual transactions uh, as it was done earlier now they do a, a, you know like a set off transaction of all the uh, of all the dealings that has happened um, this obviously has benefited almost everybody you know we almost never go to banks now uh, i remember my father taking me to the bank uh, long before uh, the private banks came and you know teaching me how to go about the bank what does the tailor do uh, where to deposit the check and you know it was a form of education in the earlier times that you know you must learn how to go to the bank and you know where to go for what work um, i don't see my daughter you know who is two or three years old going through that training anytime uh, you know they will probably you know she already has a junior account of a bank which i uh, kind of do but uh, manage but by the time she's eight she can get a debit card so and she can withdraw 200 rupees per day uh, out of that uh, and going forward I, i'm sure the bank kind of increases that limit uh, so you know we have a tremendous improvement in service but at the same time um, there's a flip side to it which is the legal risk and the crime that happens uh, so uh, it's probably touched less uh, prevalent here but in the United States and other countries uh, you know you have had banks uh, like JP Morgan uh, you know huge banks who have lost transactions uh, and billions of dollars of themselves as well as the customers um, you have had in again in the United States uh, companies like Target which are retail companies uh, where people would have just bought a five dollar uh, you know uh, and maybe a child's toy or something but the entire credit data uh, got stolen and you know somebody would have just taken that data and impersonated that guy because he had uh, what the United States is the social security number which is like the gateway to US citizenship practically so they became impersonated him on uh, in taxation in every got every detail that they can and you know basically transacted started transaction globally so this risk uh, banks are now you know i think taking uh, managing this risk in two ways essentially banks and the entire ecosystem as such uh, one is of course using technology against technology which is you know if you look at Indian cards, uh, you know, and Indian banks have, or, or even foreign banks operating in India have been probably a step ahead in this. You know, we have chip cards, more or less now compulsory, uh, which uh, doesn't give the the point of sale guy complete access to the to the credit history or the full credit number of the individual buying. He just gets, you know, whether this guy, you know, card can go through or not for this amount. Um, so there's a whole lot of technology. Uh, there's uh, again encryption issues that are, uh, you know, more encryption that is put in. Uh, 
uh, in the system. And then, of course, there are companies uh, which are working primarily on, on cybersecurity issues. Uh, and finally, using analytics. Uh, so, you know, just to give an example, a couple of days back, uh, you know, somebody in my office card got, uh, you know, uh, under fraud. And the bank understood it because he had purchased Starbucks coffee 40 minutes back. And with 40 minutes later, there was a transaction in Kentucky, in USA, uh, in an Apple store. So the system understood that this guy can't be in 40 minutes traveling from Nehru Place to United States uh, to do true transactions. And therefore, there must be somebody else in the United States doing this transaction. So there's a whole lot of analytics that banks are putting in. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, you have government stepping in. So if you look at uh, any government cyber regulations, uh, most bank, uh, most companies, uh, most countries, sorry, would consider banking as a critical infrastructure uh, because they understand that banking is one, it, it is, uh, has a delimiting effect on your basic defense. So if one other country or even a rogue agent takes over a sizable portion of your banking industry, that effectively cuts your citizens and in the country's security systems out for a long time. Uh, the second problem is, you know, the, you know, they can really, some rogue agent can really do wrong things in the system, uh, which would take uh, ages to correct. So all governments are taking huge, uh, large steps in terms of uh, protecting the cybersecurity around the banking infrastructure. Um, and we in India are not behind in the sense that, you know, we have uh, several amendments to the IT Act, uh, Section 66 BCD, uh, um, which deal with uh, criminalization of uh, sphere phishing and other issues uh, which can be used. Um, and uh, the industries also need to work with the government. So there has to be information sharing between uh, the law enforcement agencies and the companies uh, so that you know there is greater information sharing about both specific threats like, you know, we, we understand this guy just did a credit card fraud, so he might do something else as well. As well as general, you know, we see, you know, for, for the bank realizes that there's a lot of fraud happening in one particular region, so there might be something else wrong also might be happening. So information uh, sharing and analytics that the industry has is of critical importance, uh, and there has to be two-way flow of information between uh, the government and the private parties. Um, I will finally uh, touch upon two most uh, issues. One is training, uh, which is we need more cybersecurity professionals in this country. Uh, you know, it's true we have a lot of software engineers, but I'm not sure how many cybersecurity trained professionals are there. You know, even in, within the company, I often hear that people who do coding don't think about security. So they just think about, wow, it's a nice experience and the customer would be happy about it. But, you know, so one of the things most companies have been trying are, uh, you know, to start privacy by design and security by design. So when you are doing the coding itself, don't just think of the customer experience. Think of the security uh, that particular program will give to the end customer. Um, and finally, in the last uh, panel also, it was, uh, you know, uh, the issue of business espionage uh, and trade secrets leak, which uh, you know has happening quite a large extent within the government, from the government, outside the government, but within the private sector as well. Unfortunately, we don't in India have a, a, a comprehensive law on trade secret, which protects both government data as well as private data. There is the Official Secrets Act, which uh, pro, you know protects some uh, government data, but there is not comprehensive law which protects all uh, business espionage related data, both from private and public sector, and maybe that's some area, the trade secret law, which would be of importance uh, working forward. So thanks for the time, uh, and look forward to questions. <coughs>